Seawall side lift. This video made October 2016, starting with the seawall on the seabed lying on its side with two degrees of trim and two degrees of heel. This starting condition is more difficult than originally planned as the seawall has this heel and trim resulting from the consequences of the bow lift. We'll see the HMPE upper slings connected and the lift frame suspended in the Orcaflex model. The lower wire rope slings connected between the balance slings are initially loose they have self-weight only, they're partly submerged. Most of the lifting beam elements are positioned as planned, although we have the heel and trim. We're going to see the seawall slowly raise. First of all, the lifting frame raises with the main hooks of the ZPMC crane. We'll see the tension take up on all the slings We'll see the lift frame rotate before the seawall starts to lift. And we'll see time domain simulations of all sling loads with Orcaflex. We're going to show a simulation over a period of about 500 seconds where we're slowly raising the seawall. Here we see an Orcaflex screen, the blue background is a plane that I've added to simulate the top of the seabed which allows me to better show the effect of the lifting beams being not level with the seabed but where they're beneath the seabed they're shown dark I've removed the surface of the sea the ZPMC crane in the background the HMPE slings in slightly different colors the main lifting wires, the winches for the hooks for the ZPMC crane, a nominal hook elevation of 80.9 meters at the start of this lift with the shivs elevation at 140.5. Other important parts are the lifting frame angles beginning at small angles, 0.19 heel, 06 trim both negative. The seawall on the seabed at negative 2.01 and negative 2.04 and the ZPMC vessel almost no heel and a trim of negative 0.5 to begin with. The lifting frame is at elevation 11 to begin with. Now without any waves acting and without showing the surface of the sea, this simulation with Orcaflex is going to replay the lift from the seabed where the slings are just loose, not, not yet tight. The seawall is just in this position on the seabed. I've got three different views here and I'm going to click to replay and it's going to be replaying about 10 times faster than the real lift. But you'll be able to see the pick up from the seabed, the slings coming tight, the seawall raising, change of angles of the frame, the seawall comes up to a final position and stays there with a bit of rocking around as this was lifted faster than real time and should stay there until the end of the simulation at 500 seconds and we'll see it repeat again and this time the seawall was first raised and then in this simulation lowered back down to simulate its starting position on the seabed and now we see the simulation as if she was being lifted 
as before. We see it coming up, the frame straightening up. So I'll reset that and we'll play it at real time. Now we're going to look at this replaying in real time, at least real simulation time. It's, it's being simulated happening much faster than it would do in fact, but at a reasonable time. So the simulation where the lifting starts from its position where it's had to be lowered to get a stable solution in Orcaflex is at 110 seconds. This is the start button. And if you look at this screen here, you see the slings will gradually pull tight. They appear to pull through the pontoons, which are the outside buoyancy. But you'll see them tighten up. And you'll then see this pick up from beneath the seabed where it's darker shaded. And you'll see the lift frame has to twist down to line up with the seawall. <clears throat> so now the lift frame is beginning to twist. The slings are coming tight. The lift frame is twisting. And you can see here that it's slowly twisting. <clears throat> These slings are still loose. Here you can see them kinked. Um, round about time 210, 220 seconds, the frame is pulled all the way round and the seawall is just starting to lift. So now we're coming up to 185, 190 seconds. All slings are nearly tight. The lift frame has twisted around. It's parallel to the seawall now, and the lift is just about to start, and we'll slowly see this rise up in this end view above the blue seabed, and we'll look at it in different ways shortly, but we're on to time 2.20 now, and you'll see in each view the the frame is slowly starting to raise, the seabed is disappearing and as she raises the frame and the seawall twist so that she hangs nearly level, the center of gravity isn't perfectly aligned with the center of the hooks so there's a slight angle still but now we're slowly into the lifting mode. Again, no waves acting in this simulation. We'll look at this now in a graphical format and explain how the winches are being used. This slide shows the Whole of the lift in still water simulated from 110 to 500 seconds. The main control are the main controls are the two things called winch one and winch two. These are the ZPMC main winches raising the hooks. So. From 110 to about 400 seconds, the length of the winch is shortened from something like 59 to about 44 meters. So the hook raises up that distance of something like 14, 15 meters. Um, I've tried to make it a smooth curve, so I've slowly accelerated and decelerated the hooks to avoid jerking. And the consequence of raising the hooks is that the seawall center of the hole, it, it began to raise, it, it rocked around a little as the tensions were all taken up, which we discussed in the previous slide then gradually came up and at about 400 seconds it stopped going up and stayed level. 
the lift frame did something a little different because it was aligning itself with the the seawall, so it didn't stay level. Um, as the load was taken, the slings were adjusting their lengths and tensions, and the lift frame eventually started to raise smoothly, and again stopped at 400 seconds. One particular sling, HMPE sling, is shown here. This is the heaviest loaded sling, and during the lift cycle, it got up to 271 tons, and then gradually settled down and oscillated around a bit, um, at around 200 tons or 2,000 kilonewtons. The two main hooks on the ZPMC crane, hook two or winch two in the OrcaFlex simulation, and winch one is shown here. So this one is shown going up to. Um, 33,000 kilonewtons or 3,300 tons and then dropping back. This one got up to and stays at about 2,700, 2,800 with some rocking going on. Here we can take a look at the snapshot of what was happening at about 220 seconds just as she was starting to lift. The seawall had moved slightly, so the heel had reduced to negative 0.7. The trim was still about the same. Um, the elevation of the lift frame had changed. The hook elevation had changed quite a bit. And the shivs had pulled down a bit as the crane barge trim has changed from, it was negative 0.5, it's now negative 0.08. It's got a bit of heel on it now. Um, during a transient stage, picking up the lift with the seawall tending to pull in one direction because of the inclination. And the lift frame is now almost lined up with the seawall. Now we look at the big picture when the seawall has been raised but still submerged at the end of our simulation 500 seconds. The shivs have pulled down a little bit more. The trim on the ZPMC crane is now nearly zero. The heel's gone back to nearly zero. We've got an elevation for the lifting frame and an elevation for the hooks and we can see the winch wires are significantly shortened. As I said we pulled them up about 15 meters and that's where we ended the simulation with everything hanging stationary no waves in this simulation we pause at this point to look at sling nomenclature and what we mean by various terms with two hooks hook one and hook two 32 HMPE upper slings they go from the main lifting frame in red to the hooks and they've got a numbering system which is shown here on one side of the lifting frame. The number 8FH1-T indicates it's sling number 8 in the set. F is forwards, H1 is hook 1 and T means it's on the top side of the seawall, whereas H2B, B means it's on the bottom or the keel side. Beneath the lifting frame, there are eight sets of balance slings. These slings are a continuous sling running from this point down to a shiv, up to a shiv, down to a shiv, up to a shiv, and so on. These are four sets on each side. Then from the lower shiv, there's a wire sling that goes down to a lifting beam or just around the seawall hull. There's 68 of those, 34 on each side. It's obviously a very complicated system and it's very demanding on the Orcaflex static and dynamic analyses. 
I've called out 1FH2T as it features in some of the analyses as being the most heavily loaded sling during the initial stages of the lift and sometimes takes more load than any of the other slings at any time during the lift including dynamics. So though we have the basic arrangement of the sling system one big lifting frame in red which weighs about 1,200 tons and is very very important in the dynamics of the whole system. It's a third large body and it has no water damping so it's free to move in the air with almost no damping coming from like the seawall hull or the ZPMH crane hull which have fluid water damping. This shows a still water solution for the time period during the raising simulation 210 seconds to 222 seconds and during this time period the maximum tensions in the upper slings are shown in this graph here with the numbering system we've just seen in the previous slide. We see that the heaviest loaded sling is called 1FH2T F for forwards, H2 for the hook, T for the top side of the seawall and its tension is 271 tons during this time period. The balance sling tensions are called out in this part of the graph. So we have ballast aft, T for top, inner sling, balance aft, B for bottom, inner sling, balance forward, B, inner sling, balance forward, T, inner sling, and so on. Then beneath the balance slings, the peak tension there we see in one sling was 41.9 tons. We have the lower slings typically connecting to the lifting beams that are being so difficult to install because of poor soil expectations, lack of proper investigation. Um, we see the balance, the, the lower slings have similar tensions in groups as they're connected to the balance sling. So this group of eight here have a tension of 80 tons during this time period and they're connected to one of the balance slings. A lower tension group here is connected to another balance sling. So this group is on the top side of the seawall and this group of slings is on the keel side of the seawall. Obviously a lot of analysis and a lot of post-processing goes into producing simple looking graphs like this. Here is the same format graph for the sling tensions, the maximum sling tensions in the time period 488 to 500 seconds and we see that the maximum upper sling, HMP sling, is no longer uh, this guy back down here but it's moved to this position here uh, 1AH1 B for bottom and it's not as large as the previous tension, it's 224 tons. This is when the seawall is suspended and the lifting has stopped um, maximum tension in any balance sling 36, 35.6. Maximum tension in any balance sling during this time period, 35.6, 35.6 tons. So we've just reviewed the still water lift simulation where we saw 1FH2T reach a maximum of 27.1 tons with a smooth lift in still water. Um, the oscillations on the graph is because the thing does swing around a bit 
they wouldn't be quite so large if we'd lifted very slowly as we would in reality. Now we move on to a uh, simulation with waves. So this next simulation, um, it's a two meter regular wave equivalent to a significant wave height of about 1.25 meters, 12 seconds period, 90 degrees, means it's coming perpendicular to the seawall along the y-axis as indicated by the squiggly arrow in this part of the screen here. So it's traveling along the axis of the ZPMC crane causing some pitch motion. Now we see that this sling, it's still the heaviest loaded sling during the lift, one FH2T reaches 306 tons and we see that the the lift frame raises with some wiggling, oscillating because of the crane movement. Um, and of course, some wave loads on the seawall. The maximum hook loads now have a more significant dynamic range of about 500 tons. They're a little larger. And this total simulation is the same time from 110 to 500 seconds. Now we move on to a, a same wave height period, um, 1.25 meters significant, 12 second period, but now at a 45 degree attack angle, 45 degrees to both the seawall and to the ZPMC, which are orthogonal to each other. The the sling, which we've seen before getting the highest load, the one of the upper HMP slings, now gets a bigger load still of 358 with much more oscillation. We see much more oscillation in the time history of the lifting frame itself. We see it ends up with a, a vertical oscillation of nearly a range of two meters from nearly 14 to 16 meters. The seawall itself has a similar oscillation range and a quite large, very large dynamic range on hooks of the ZPMC crane and of course the largest tensions in, in each hook. So this is um, the overall simulation and now we'll look at a few more details. So here's the post-processed tabular results in the same format as we've seen before for the static conditions. This time the two meter waves are 1.25 meters significant, 12 second period and the 90 degree attack angle. Uh, peak tension in one FH2T is 306 tons, the distribution of tensions in the time period, 209 to 221. I've used that period just to capture the wave oscillation inside that. That's a one wave period. Um, balancing up to 48.2 and the individual lower sling tensions. This shows how things will settle down when the raising has stopped with the seawall raised but still submerged. For the last 12 seconds in the last wave period, the maximum tensions that are predicted from the simulation in the various slings are shown here with 275 tons being the maximum HMPE sling, um, in this case 1AH1B, the bottom um, maximum tensions in the balance slings 45.7 tons and the distribution of um, the lower sling tensions shown in the lower graphs here. Again this is the 90 degree 12 second 1.25 significant wave. We review now the tabular or, or the graphical column graphs uh, for the sling tension results for the 45 degree case at the critical phase of lifting 
with this two degree two degree start um, on the seabed and uh, peak sling tension one FH two T in this time period uh, 190 to 202 seconds is where the peak occurs is now 358 tons a maximum balance sling tension comes to 61.2 tons and there's our distribution of tensions in the lower slings. We look at how it ends up when it's um, fully suspended and the lifting is stopped. So this is the last 12 seconds in the simulation. And the maximum we see during the 12 seconds in now 1AH1B is nearly the same. Um, it's 356 tons and in the balance sling we're up to 59.4 maximum and the maximum we see in the lower slings now is about 118 and this is because of the dynamics mostly of the ZPMC crane in the 45 degree 12 second wave. Now we'll take a look at our three windows, the um, end view with shaded graphics, a sort of isometric style view with shaded graphics, and let's call this an end view and this a side view. Uh, about to start the simulation with the 12 second 45 degree wave, I'm going to leave the waves off so that we can see the seawall yellow beams, lifting beams simulated by this yellow patch here. Um, and I'll start the simulation, real time simulation. So we're running 120, 122 and so on seconds here. And we see the culprit that's causing the large oscillations is the small crane motions, but the quite large sway. We start off with the um, lifting crane because there's nothing at the moment to stop it swaying. Um, obviously, this is completely undesirable, very dangerous, and um, I'm sure the contractor will do everything he can to stop this happening. But we're seeing the lift slowly occur with the motion um, going on. The slings are just about to start tightening and we'll see the seabed disappearing as the lifting beams get raised up over. We saw these ones just coming tight. We, we know it begins to lift at about 120, oh, sorry, 220 seconds. So we still got this swaying motion going on and it, very undesirable, very, very slight roll of the ZPMC crane, but because this great big heavy lifting frame has got nothing to restrain it. So big tugger lines carefully controlled would be required probably towards the sea, uh, towards the crane and a couple towards the tug would be sensible. That's up to the salvage contractor to decide. So now we're, we're raising, we'll see the seabed going away, the seawall's changing its attitude, and we're coming up, and we're still swaying around. Now that we're taking load, the, the frame is less violent in its motions. You can still see the slight sway up here we're playing at real simulation time. So these are seconds ticking away here. And we're slowly raising. And we see the seawall with some motions. We realize those motions must be causing dynamic forces. Uh, however, the frame is roughly horizontal with the seawall. But there is slight pitch and slight roll motion of the seawall for this particular load condition and this 12 second 45 degree wave. So one gets an idea of 
conditions that you really, really want to avoid uh, and not let these kind of conditions be unpredicted and creep up on you so that you get another accident. These are some important notes. The upper swing tensions, the HMPE slings, are very sensitive to the HMPE stiffness or AE values. This stiffness or AE value will change as the slings experience static and dynamic loading. The longer and higher the dynamic load and the magnitude of the load, the larger will the AE gradually become up to a maximum of probably 1000 meganewtons. It will probably begin at about 500 meganewtons. The upper sling tensions are also sensitive to sling lengths. The sling lengths are not adjustable, so they must be made to the correct length. And once made, there's no, no forgiveness in the planned method of rigging to account for changes that may occur. The dynamic tensions that occur are not linear with wave height. Everything about this system is quite non-linear. So the figures below are taken from the STA report, coupled side lift dynamic analysis summary report, which used one meter regular waves equivalent to an HS or significant wave height of 0.6 meters. And here we see the comparable graph, because in this presentation, an AE value of 500 meganewtons has been used, anticipated to, to be that which will correspond to the slings when the lifts are first started. But it'll probably be a little low, especially if the lift takes a long time, by the time the vessel is coming out of the water. So, these lower values are for the submergence depths that you see tabulated on the right here. And the upper set of values, the, the maximum in the blue line, the mean in the green line, and the minimum in the red line are the values for hook one loads for the wave direction of 45 degrees, wave height one meter, and different wave periods from four seconds through to 12 seconds. We've used 12 seconds in this, in this presentation. However, when you do get to lift out of the water, probably the <coughs> AE value has increased to about a thousand meganewtons. And in that case, the upper curve here with the blue line would be what you'd expect for maximum sling tensions. Uh, well, for hook one tensions, um, the upper blue line for one meter waves, they'd be larger with the two meter waves, but that hasn't been analyzed. So there's a big difference between what you get with 1,000 meganewtons for the AE value compared to what you get with 500 meganewtons for the AE value for the HMPE slings. Now continuing our presentation on important notes, at this point in October, mid-October 2016, uh, we've got a problem with installing the lifting beams, but Really, not all the lifting beams are absolutely needed. Um, and if we did want all of the beams, we could replace individual beams with a combination of multiple chains and small spreader bars at the end of the chain systems. Chains could be pulled underneath the hull with pilot wires, and the pilot wires could be put into pilot holes drilled through the rocky seabed beneath the hull. And conventional modern HDD horizontal directional drilling could be adapted to the seawall offshore situation. Modern HDD techniques can handle fractured rock. Probably a bespoke inclined riser would be needed to uh, 
recirculate the drilling fluid, but you should be able to get a small accurate hole through in a day. Um, new sling rigging lift configurations can be examined quickly and efficiently with Orcaflex. But I can't overemphasize the importance of dynamics. Um, it, it really is important to do this lift in conditions that won't give rise to large dynamic forces. And we've seen how much the lift frame can swing around. That, that should be considered. Um, wave forecasting, therefore, is critically important. I've raised doubts about the total weight and the location, particularly the transverse weight center, as, as a result of my analysis of the bow lift where healing occurred. Um, the, the healing may in part have been due to the possible weight center being closer towards the top side of the vessel than has been previously estimated. However, I haven't been able to talk to SSC about that issue I've offered to, um, but no response. The initial geotechnical data uh, was inadequate and We've repeated that so many times, but now rocks being found underneath um, unexpected boulders, cobbles. We're not sure. We haven't seen it. We can't get proper details. The healing permitted during the bow lift probably resulted in the present problems um, and certainly, I think, could have been prevented. Seawall side lift. October 2016, concluding remarks. Starting conditions with trim and heel, they result in some large initial sling tensions that we've seen during this presentation. We know not all the lifting beams are positioned as planned. So this analysis would need some adjustment to take into account what we've got or what will finally be there when a side lift takes place. But previously, uh, stress analysis has indicated that not all the lifting beams are really needed, so some could be left out. Some or all of the lifting beams can be replaced with alternative rigging. As I said in the previous slide, we could put chains underneath. Alternative analysis of uh, analysis of alternative configurations is very important. It's also quite quick and easy to do. The analysis of the initial raising of the hull and the deflection of the main lift frame is seen to be important. The lift frame must rotate before the sea wall, sea wall will fully lift. And in all of this, the time domain simulation of all sling loads during the lifting process is important. I hope everybody who's watched this has learned something.